it's still an event to be able to prove that you're one of the best in the world. Oh, extensions, they gotta fight for their lives. Get Bolo, there he is again. There's a lot on the line for us. You know, it's kind of like a redemption arc to show that we're still a titan in the Siege esports world. Oh, he gets it the last possible second. This is the end of the year. This is their last chance to really show who they are and set the expectations that they think should be correct going into the big world championship just a few months later. Astro goes for the trade, finds and is the closest the player on Sonic. It's really interesting to see how all of these teams have kind of battled up against these others. I feel it. Clear mind, play your game, do you, and whatever happens, happens. My name is Jason Bolo Doty. I am 21, and I am a player for TSMR6. Rainbow Six is a tactical first-person shooter, but it's unique because you can destroy the map. I usually explain it as the chess of FPSs. There's a lot going on, there's a lot of things you gotta think about. And you can construct it how you want to, so the architecture of it is all up to the players, it's all up to your imagination, and that's what separates it from pretty much every other first-person shooter out there. Siege is the apex of competitive FPSs. It requires aim, it requires constant game sense, it requires full usage of the game's utility at all times. It's easily the most demanding game in the FPS market, in my opinion. My role in the team, um, being kind of like a flex, sometimes entry, it's basically just whatever is needed for like a like a switch up or you know a different strategy or whatever it may be. I'll kind of you know try to fill that. If nobody else wants to switch their stuff, then I'll go to it. Bolo has always been a player that does things that just gobsmack you. He is one of the best to ever touch Rainbow Six Siege, and the craziest thing is, is he is still unbelievably young. I think that, honestly, his name speaks for itself. There's a reason why everybody asks, when does he play? One friend. This competition represents like all of our work this stage with our new players leading up to like a culmination of all of our work. For a lot of teams in esports, I feel like there's these moments where they hit this absolute peak. And if you don't capture your light at that absolute peak, then there's not exactly a guarantee that you're gonna be able to make it back. And not a lot of people do just because of the mental struggle that happens after that moment. Now this major is the best 16 teams currently from each region, so four from Latin America, four from North America, four from the uh, EU, and four from Asia Pacific. So the majors for Rainbow Six Siege are a lot like the majors if you watch tennis, for example, where we, oh, have, a big, yes. yeah, we have a big collective tournament once every few months where the best teams in the world all come together to try and prove who is the best of the best, not necessarily in the world for that entire year, but for this short quarter, for this few months of a period, and that's what we're trying to decide here in Yan Choping. At least in tennis, like a lot of times, people try to win all of them or whatever. In Rainbow Six, nobody's ever won like all the majors in the, the Invitational, so. I think for TSM, it means a lot to them because just uh, just this year, they were the six invite champions. And this year, 2022, so really not all that long ago. I think if you were to ask any TSM member what their most memorable moment was on stage, it would probably just be our previous victory at February 2022, Six Invitational in Stockholm, where we won the Invitational. And I don't think anyone else would give a, a different different answer. And I think that's going to stick to me, you know, for for years, decades, and you know, maybe my whole life. So coming back to this uh, to this country has a lot of history for them, and so they want to repeat their form, being major champions. We had a little bit of a downturn. We made two roster changes. We picked up some really uh, young young players, some rookies. 
with how Siege is and how grind heavy the game is, you really got to get in the lab and cook some things up in order to be one of the top teams. It takes a lot of effort. And uh, for a lot of those top teams, there's kind of a burnout near the tail end of that. And that's kind of where NA has lost out for this later half of the year. So all those teams had to recreate themselves, including the Sonics, including TSM, and they've bounced back in a pretty convincing way. This competition represents like all of our, all of the work we've done with our new players, like leading into this event, and um, it's important for us to really prove what we, what we can do with these new guys and with our old players. Yeah, I mean, it feels really good to be here, but you know, it's the job's not done. We still got a, a long way to go throughout these playoffs, and hopefully, we can uh, replicate our Sweden victory from February. Sonics, they look good. They come out of North America at the moment. They've just picked, recently picked up Geometrics, who's actually the former teammate of that uh, TSM roster. He's come in with that new IGLing power. Sonics have got some really great firepower in their front line. They've got really great entry fraggers, and it's all supported by Geo, who's there on that IGLing role. And there's a lot on the line for us. You know, it's kind of like a redemption arc to show that we're still a titan in the Siege esports world. I feel it. Clear mind, play your game, do you, and whatever happens, happens. When does Bolo play? How about now? It's TSM! Our team is very, very good at being like fast, aggressive, get in people's faces. That's a big tally at this point. That's the real deal, but Bolo trying to refrag does so successfully. That's why we do very well internationally, is we're able to just say, okay, maybe we need to just slow down, relax, and We'll just win three rounds. Sitting inside of the bathroom, he's looking So I think that's what makes us very strong is that we're very adaptable. Personally, I do feel pressure from, you know, the fans, the, the whole community. You, if you read the comments, read, you know, anything, it's, it's, it's basically just everyone talking shit on you. No one likes that. Individually, I'd probably put pressure on myself. You know, I always feel like I have to perform. I have to, you know, keep up a certain status. TSM compelled into action. Yeah. Kansan, they put erection, two pairs of eyes, and it's Kansan again. I know my limits, and I know I'm, I need to be up at a, a certain threshold. And, you know, every day, every match, I'm fighting to get there. Whoa, become focused. Both Grixer as well as Gunner are there. Because the only one that's going to really defeat us is ourselves. For Sonics, they should have no takes down Geo, but he doesn't get Rexon. Sonics pummel TSM in the third map. And they're going to the semis tomorrow with TSM eliminated. The final four teams here in Yonsherping will all search for their first international major championship. And we will have a new champion. So this competition, we're kind of a newer team. This is, for a lot of us, the first major that we've gotten to actually play in front of a crowd. So for us, it was kind of a come out here, have fun, show the international teams what we are actually capable of doing because the last few majors that we've attended, we've gotten grouped in every single one of them. So this one, we wanted to come out here and prove people wrong. North America this year has, um, they struggled in Berlin. They couldn't quite close it out. It was Latin America versus EU at the last major, but now North America has come to their form. They look really good here. And yeah, they're representing their region from far away. I feel like we kind of went into the game as underdogs. Obviously TSM is probably like the NA favorites. So we went into it seeing all over Twitter, all over Reddit, oh, TSM is going to murder these guys, they're going to slaughter them. So we kind of went into it just thinking, okay, we're just going to play our game, and we're going to go into it with the mindset of we're going to prove these people wrong, and we're going to basically shut their like part of the crowd up because the only crowd that was there were basically cheering for TSM. 
So it kind of gave us like the extra motivation to go in and be the underdogs and come out on top. But I think the rest of not only the region inside of North America, but the rest of the world expects them to bring a decent performance to the table at most of these majors. So I don't think that they're being written off as they may have been in the past at a minimum. And that's, while they're still an overall underdog, I think they're less of one than they were at the beginning of this year. As the overall team and the overall roster has made massive improvements since then. For me, I would say I was going to every game thinking we're gonna win, just for the fact that I feel like you just gotta be confident at least in esports or what we do. I feel like you gotta just believe in yourself if you expect others to believe in you. So that's why I thought we were gonna win. To be a pro player in this esports world, you have to have a little bit of that confidence, right? You have to be, you have to feel like you're the best, right? Even if you're the most humble person in the whole world, there's some part of you that still has to be like, yeah, I can win this, you know? I, I am the champion, I'm the best in the world. Geometrics won the World Championship with TSM and I think that when you have that experience with a five roster like those four other players, it's really hard to dislike them, right? You've gone through such a great, loving, heartwarming experience together that even though he's moved on to another roster, he's never going to forget that experience and that, that accomplishment that he's done with them. I just feel like he can't hate them, right? He's like, there's just a lot of respect that went into that matchup. For me, like I said, I feel like if I was maybe a bit younger, I'd be like obviously heated because how everything ended, but I mean, I'm just old now, so I just, I, I, we could have beat anyone. I don't really care what team it is. There's no really, there's no drive just to beat TSM. Like I, we could have played TSM anywhere and I would have been happy to beat them or any other team. Today we play BDS. We haven't gotten through the map bands yet. I'm assuming we're supposed to do that in the next probably like half hour, 45 minutes. But we're basically gonna go into this film with the same mindset. We're gonna go into it, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna be innovative, we're gonna be creative, and we're just gonna play our game. It's hard to go into a game like this expecting them to either one, do the same thing they did the last previous days or come out with the same stuff they've been showing. So instead of focusing on how they played, we focus more on how we're gonna play. Whatever happens, happens at the end of the day. If they beat us and they played better, then they were better, but I think we have a good shot at winning. The man who had the opening kill of the series. It's time to get it together at this point. Um, it's three to three, an even half One here. here. Pop of the Caritas. Oh, Kansen, oh. he's going for the ace. And there it is! Kansen with the ace, Sonics with the first. The, uh, sign in the first in the audience second. Uh, back to the break room breeze on this round about 10 seconds ago here there's an instant response from Bree day Greeks are buried in the chorus site not for very long but only got the reveal there and there's the swing and there is another so it goes round. down geo he slipped his way in the site and now he's the only one left BDS they broke it down and had to rebuild but boy does it look Pretty interesting game, I'd say, especially how the Sonic started off. I thought the border was very interesting. I really liked the choice for North America overall. I thought we've always been really strong on it. So those results definitely didn't shock me. Uh, but what did shock me was B uh, BDS's bounce back, just their confidence in themselves and being able to hold that into the next map, not taking it as, oh, we're down a map. There's no way that we can try and do anything with this. They looked absolutely stellar. It, it really looked like they were just playing angry. You could go out there one day and you could like you could be hitting every shot, like you could be wall banging people, you could be floor banging people. And then the next day you go out there and you're not getting any of those like lucky shots or people are just kind of adapting to the way you play a little bit better than the other team did. You've got players from all around the world that are competing for that goal and it is ruthless as a result, right? It's the best competing against what they believe is going to be the best as well. It all comes down to this. It's who plays better on that day, but at the same time, there's a little bit of luck that plays into it with the smaller things that go into Siege, because it is kind of like a puzzle. 
double here from Ness. Everybody is playing for their next month. You, you don't know if that you're going to be a player, a coach, whatever in esports, you know, the next year, let alone the next month. So all of these people are trying to compete as hard as they can to show what they can do uh, in order to not only have a job, but also find success in esports, because that's really what it's about. Everybody wants to lift a trophy, lift a hammer. I do think, at least with this game and others, you can build consistency, like even if you aren't winning your ones or your team plays so good that like that carries more than just your individual skill set. But I do believe there are some days where you just get ridiculously lucky and I mean you could be wobbling and so on every other round and winning rounds off that type of stuff. The esports world, not necessarily just even R6, is very volatile. It can be very rewarding, but also very um, dangerous, I guess, you know, ruthless, because, you know, one slip up, one bad thing, one, you know, bad series, and, it, you know, your name is tarnished, your reputation is hindered, and, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to get out of that, so. Just kind of cruising, doing the best I can, and hopefully, you know, we can, we can make a name for ourselves.